there comes a point in every project where the component you're using just isn't good enough. So you set off to build your own, starting with the humble button. Let's go. First, create a new component file in components slash UI slash button. Then create the most bare bones component you can start with. This button is simply a wrapper around the native HTML button. The properties are simply the button HTML attributes with nothing else. You can see exactly what the props are by clicking into the TypeScript definition and taking a look at how React defines the button properties. The detailed HTML props is simply a wrapper around native properties that adds the ref attribute. Next, clear a place in your application where you can just focus on making the button. This could be a storybook or just a blank page in your app. Add in the button. And now you're ready to iterate. Now we can focus on just the button. Our button currently has no styling applied and Tailwind's preflight zeroes out and removes the browser's base styles. With Tailwind, you get this perfectly unstyled button without preflight, with preflight, without, with. Anyways, I like to work through a component state by state. For a button, that's the default state, hover, focused, and disabled. Because we're dealing with lots of class names, we're going to add the CLSX package to make our life easier. Go ahead and import that, and then destructure the props to pull out the class name. We're going to put our classes first and then the user's class, if they passed one in, last. That way they can override our classes if they want to. And now working through the default state, we simply add classes and tweak the button to get it to look like how we want. All right, I'm pretty happy with how the button currently looks. We've given it a nice shape, some good padding, good font, and a little bit of shadow to really bring it to life. For hovering, it's important to let the user know that the element they're currently hovering their mouse over is something that they can click. You wanna make it reactive. You don't need to go crazy with this styling. Just a little effect will go a long way. Here, we're changing the background to be a little bit darker and also subtly increasing the shadow. This will kind of make the button feel like it's coming out of the screen a little bit and is something that you want to click. We added the transition class, so all of these small transitions will animate. The focus state happens when the user clicks the element and also when the user tabs to the element with the keyboard. One of the first things that I like to do is remove the browser's default outline when the user has tabbed to it. I don't think it's the prettiest way to show the tab effect, but we want to make sure the user knows they've tabbed to it, so we'll replace it with a ring.
Now when the user tabs to it, you get this nice ring around the element. And when a user clicks it, the button scales down in size just a little bit. This gives the impression that you're actually clicking the button and is really satisfying. Okay, enough of that. Lastly, for the disabled state, you want to make sure the button looks like something the user can't interact with. And then to test, just toss on the disabled attribute. You'll notice that it still activates the hover state even when it's disabled. We'll want to clean that up. And there you go. Now you have one sweet heck of a button. This is pretty good. There are a few small inconsistencies that I'd like to fix, but that's going to require a more advanced approach. We'll cover that in another video. And of course, variants. Is there anything else you'd like to see or add to the button? Anything I missed? Go ahead and drop a comment below. And until next time, happy coding.